Today we'll look at one of the most epic entanglements of predator-prey species in the world. We all know that an adult great white's preferred source of nourishment is usually seal, so much so that they often synchronise their migrations to coincide with the breeding season at their preferred seal colonies. But the coastal waters of southern Africa, where Cape fur seals nurture their offspring, are also frequented by a group of killer whales who have developed an insatiable appetite for shark liver. This dynamic set the stage for some of the most dramatic scenes we've ever witnessed play out in nature, and they all unfolded around the southernmost tip of Africa. Here at the Cape of Good Hope, the waters are influenced by two major ocean currents. The cold Benguela Current, which courses northward along the west coast of Africa, and the powerful Agulhas Current, which propels warm water southward along the eastern coast. These currents collide roughly in line with the Cape, resulting in significant upwellings of cold nutrient-rich water from the depths, which fosters the development of vast phytoplankton blooms that fuel an exceptionally productive ecosystem. The warm waters of the Indian Ocean to the east harbour a plethora of life, including numerous species of dolphins and whales, whilst to the west you can find a variety of marine species who are better suited to the cold waters of the southern Atlantic Ocean, such as the endangered African penguin and the comparatively abundant Cape fur seal, who have colonies dotted around the coast from Port Elizabeth all the way to Cape Cross. Their sheer numbers provide an essentially unlimited supply of food for great whites, but that's not to say they're easy to catch. Fur seals are well adapted to evading predators, with their sharp eyesight, speed and manoeuvrability giving them the upper hand in most situations. Time and time again, they've demonstrated not only their effectiveness, but also their ingenuity when it comes to avoiding sharks. Back in 2019, a research team published a study on great whites located around Dyer Island, in which they utilised cameras that were attached to their dorsal fins in order to reveal their hunting activity in the area. Their findings were a testament to just how proficient the seals are at avoiding sharks, with no successful hunts documented in over 28 hours of footage. The study also details how some seals responded to the presence of a shark in one of the interactions they filmed, stating that some swam deeper into the kelp, whilst others hunkered down to the sea floor and even appeared to blow bubbles as the shark swam above them. Utilising solid surfaces to their advantage is one of their better known defensive strategies. In the first episode of Planet Earth 3, there's a segment which focuses on this predator-prey dynamic, and the footage frequently shows the seals either hugging the sea floor or the rocky shoreline in order to avoid their pursuers. It also contains some quite astonishing footage of a defensive manoeuvre that pinnipeds are known for, called mobbing, where they actively harass patrolling sharks until they leave the premises, though rarely have they been seen doing so in a mob as big as this one. But even when they're all alone, out in open waters, the seals still have the upper hand thanks to their incredible agility, which is why they can seem so brazen around sharks in certain situations. So, to catch one, the sharks typically need to obtain an element of surprise, and until recently, many great whites travelled to a very specific location just for that purpose. Within False Bay, just south of Cape Town, lies Seal Island, a vital breeding site for around 60,000 Cape fur seal. Whilst their sheer numbers alone are no doubt a big draw for the sharks, the environmental factors of the bay present them with a unique opportunity to tip the scale of probability back in their favour. Between 1997 and 2004, extensive research was conducted on Great White Cape fur seal interaction within the area, and the findings were published in this study. The authors note that in order to feed, the seals typically travel to open waters outside the bay, and when going to and from their feeding grounds, they often leave and return via a rocky outcrop to the south of the island. This focal point helps the sharks predict their line of travel, which becomes all the more daunting when you learn about the landscape beneath the waves. The study states, the bottom topography of Seal Island features a steep drop-off along most of the western side of the islet, where the water depth reaches 20 metres within 50 metres of the island. This means that when the sun is low in the sky or conditions are overcast, the lack of light penetration helps render anything lurking in the drop-off zone completely invisible which is where the sharks strategically position themselves as they scan the surface for silhouettes. When the right opportunity presents itself, the shark accelerates, initially at an almost horizontal angle, until they're moving at full tilt, before propelling themselves upwards in a near vertical climb. This means they're already travelling at an immense speed before they even come into sight, 
giving their victim a matter of milliseconds to react, and that is assuming they're looking in the right direction. If the shark does connect, even if it didn't manage to catch the seal in its jaws or deal a mortal blow, the sheer force of the collision often stuns them, giving the shark the chance to circle back around before the seal regains their senses. When the lighting conditions are ideal, great whites are thought to be successful in around half of these attempts. This hunting method, which is known as breaching, although not unique to the area, was exceptionally common around False Bay. But around 2015, the sightings began to dramatically decline, to the point that by 2019, great whites seemed to have completely vanished from the area. As it turned out, although there was a distinct lack of white sharks on the western side of the Cape, researchers found that their numbers had drastically increased further east. The leading theory for this unusual and very distinct shift in population is that it was a collective flight response. But what would great whites flee from? Orca, especially two males that have been named Port and Starboard, who have developed a ravenous appetite for shark liver. This craving is understandable, considering a shark's energy reserves are stored in the form of oil in their liver, making it an extremely nutritious meal for a killer whale. Although we have known about this predatory behaviour for decades, these two individuals have been prolific in the area since at least 2015, and to make matters worse for the local sharks, it appears others are getting in on the act. On the 16th of May 2022, Christian Stopforth happened to be in the right place at the right time armed with his drone, and was able to capture, by far, the most detailed footage of orca great white predation to date. The video, which was filmed off of Hart and Boss Beach in Mossel Bay, shows a group of three killer whales and an apparently already dead great white, which is seen being forced to the surface by one of the orca, who turns it on its side and then bites into its underbelly, before driving the lifeless corpse into the depths. Although neither Port or Starboard has seen here, this study, which was co-authored by Christian Stopforth, states that eyewitnesses saw Starboard present with the group, and he departed before filming began. Additionally, the study analyses a separate incident from the same day, recorded by a Mr. Archer of Mossel Bay helicopters as he was flying over the waters off of Hot and Boss Beach. The study states, the pilot witnessed two white sharks being killed by killer whales, but neither was captured fully on film. Two video sequences at 2.07 and 2.27pm showed two killer whales, starboard in the first clip, closely following large white sharks. In both clips, the sharks displayed evasive behaviours, circling back tightly with the whale following. Ironically, the authors later compare this defensive manoeuvre to behaviour Cape fur seals sometimes display when evading white sharks, before adding that because killer whales are social and hunting groups, this evasive tactic may not be effective, as the evidence suggests. With the study stating that in the later clip, a second killer whale is seen directly approaching the circling shark before visuals were lost. And they go on to add that a series of three images also taken by Mr. Archer shows what appears to be the consumption of a free-floating shark liver, detailing that the liver is roughly the size of the killer whale's head and appears at the surface before being taken into the killer whale's mouth. The amount of nutrients stored in a white shark's liver can hardly be overstated. For example, before setting off on long migrations, that organ alone can account for up to a quarter of their body weight due to all the fatty oils it's holding. Consequently, it would appear the only effective measure the sharks can take to prevent falling prey to local orca is to flee, with the same study presenting solid evidence of an immediate flight response from other great whites in the area. The study states, four minutes before the predation occurred, author Christian Stopforth and other beach-based observers reported seeing white sharks fleeing the area in several directions, with some swimming into extremely shallow waters less than two meters deep. Additionally, they were able to obtain drone flight data from earlier that month, which enabled them to compare the number of great white sightings before and after the event, and the resulting counts are represented in this graph. The green bars represent the number of great white sightings prior to the event, the orange bar is sightings on the day of the event, and after which the sightings all but cease. When listening to the audio from the original video, I immediately get the vibe that it was the sound of the orca communicating which gave the rest of the sharks their cue to flee. But evidently, even an absence of great whites doesn't stop the onslaught. In February 2023, 20 sharks washed up on a beach in Handsby over the course of one day, all of whom had had their livers removed, and almost all of them were seven gill sharks, not one was a great white. 
The incredible footage I previously referenced from Planet Earth 3 was apparently all filmed around the Robert Peninsula, which is a newly adopted hotspot for Great Whites. There's also been a noticeable increase in white shark presence around Algoa Bay and the KwaZulu-Natal coastline, and understandably, many believe these new visitors are the same sharks that vanished from the waters around Cape Town. But this apparent mass relocation may not be permanent. In December 2023, four great whites were spotted in the waters around False Bay, which may be a sign more sharks will be returning in the years to come.